So you've learned all the Python basics, all the fundamentals of the Python programming language, and you want to know what do you do next? What do I do with this Python programming? So I'm going to lay out in this video a path where you can continue to learn skills in Python and work towards a career as a Python programmer. These are things you can work towards. So it's going to depend, though, uh, some on what your interests are and uh, which direction you want to work. But I'm going to spell out some paths that you can follow. So first, some other essential programming skills in Python that you're going to want to build up. You're going to want a deeper understanding of Python data structures. It's going to be critically important for any career in programming. So strings, tuples, lists, dictionaries, and even NumPy arrays. That's pretty important. So that's one of the first things you're probably going to want to focus on is to get a deeper understanding of those data structures and how they're used. Uh, next, I would say in advanced data structures, either a class or an online course or something uh, to learn more advanced data structures like trees and graphs, queues, stacks, heaps, linked lists. So those data structures are really critically important in a programming career. After that, I think that's really part of your foundation. But after that, you need to be able to, at least at a basic level, analyze algorithms. So apply big O analysis to an algorithm and understand how big O applies. And to also learn some basic tree and graph and sorting algorithms. So tree traversals, graph traversals, binary search trees. Those are critical data structures and algorithms. You need to learn some basics of that. Uh, next, I would say SQL or uh, databases in general and specifically SQL is kind of the most popular database programming language. So learning some basics of SQL, you don't need to be an expert at SQL, but you do need to know how to access data in SQL and how SQL is, is used to store data. And then object-oriented programming. So classes, class structures, and inheritance, and even some basic design patterns. So those are some programming essentials in Python that I think are going to be critical for you as a programmer to develop. And those are things that I would work on next. And after that, or maybe even at the same time, you need to gain some problem solving and coding skills in Python. In other words, take what you've learned and put it to use to solve a problem. OK, here's a problem. How do you do this? And there are a bunch of different sites that are great for that. Project Euler or Project Euler, depending on whether you want the German or English pronunciation. Project Euler is a great site that gives you a lot of hard math problems that you can think through, figure out how to code those. And actually, it's only 10 lines of code in a lot of cases. But it's a great learning exercise because you it forces you to think what you know about programming and how to solve a specific math problem. Also, Code Wars, Top Coder, and Hacker Rank are three of the more popular programming challenge websites where you can go there. And those are actually online tools where they give you a problem you can type your code in in their online editor and run it there. So those, there are a bunch of different other sites. Those are a few that I recommend checking out. But gain some programming, practical problem-solving skills in Python. That's critically important. Next, I want to talk about some popular career tracks in Python. I'm going to talk about three of them in this video, although there are many more applications for Python. Three of the most popular career tracks in Python, one is web development. So if you're going to go into web development, you should learn the two most popular web frameworks for Python are Django and Flask. So I recommend you learn at least one of those, if not both, if you're interested in using Python in a web development career. So Django and Flask, there are tons of tutorials on those online. I don't have any on my channel, but there are plenty of them available online. You can also take a course in web development using Python, and they'll teach you Django and Flask frameworks. And then also related languages for web development, I would say JavaScript is critically important. You have to learn JavaScript. So if you're, if you're a master of Python, that's great. But if you really want to be a web developer, you also need to know JavaScript. So start learning JavaScript if you don't know it already. So that's one, web development. Number two, data analysis and visualization. And for data analysis and visualization, there's a lot of jobs in this because there's tons of data available and people want to be able to get useful information, actionable intelligence out of that data. And that's what this job is, right? Data analysis and visualization. So to do that, first you're going to need to be a master of NumPy and Pandas and Matplotlib. 
So these three basic Python libraries that you're going to use constantly in data analysis and visualization. So master those. And then some related languages that you may or may not want to learn. R and Julia are pretty similar, actually, in terms of capabilities with Python. Uh, but they're worth looking at. And if you have time, you can dabble in R and Julia. And actually, I think R is, I've at least dabbled in that. And it's not that hard to learn. It's a pretty simple programming language. And then number three, machine learning. So machine learning, there's a lot of hype around machine learning, but I'll tell you it's, it's probably harder to get into a machine learning career than you think it is because a lot of people have PhDs in machine learning. People that are writing the algorithms in machine learning are actually pretty advanced programmers. Uh, but if you, want to, if you want to focus on uh, getting some skills in machine learning, you probably want to start by learning NumPy and Pandas again, as well as TensorFlow, Keras, Scikit-learn and Theano are probably the most popular machine learning libraries for Python. Just get some practice with those. And then you may want to do some machine learning or data science exercises on the Kaggle website, which is very popular for data science. Uh, and a few other good projects that are worth working on. If you, you know, if you haven't found anything yet that or you don't know what to work on, but you want to work on some cool project to get some more skills and experience in Python, you can do web data mining. So learn how to grab data off of the web. And there are tons of tutorials on this on the web. Uh, recommendation systems. How to be able to uh, look at thousands of users or hundreds of thousands of users and recommend to a new user some, a book that he might like or a video that he might like. Sentiment analysis for reviews and tweets. So this is useful for Twitter. It's also useful for, for movie reviews, book reviews, any kind of review, product reviews but sentiment analysis to be able to analyze a, a review and decide whether or not that's a positive review or a negative review and what, what they said about it. So that's a natural language processing related. And then search engines, not trivial, but yeah, you could develop a simple search engine in Python. Kaggle data science competitions I already mentioned. And you could also contribute to open source projects. So that wraps up this video on Python career paths and what next. So I hope that gives you some ideas on what to do next with your Python skills to take it to the next level. Don't stop. You have to keep learning. And these are just some ideas for you to focus on. And, and if your next stop is to learn data structures, algorithms, and NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, I actually have a lot of videos on those topics on my YouTube channel that cover those pretty thoroughly. So if you have other feedback or comments on this video, I'd love to see that in the comments down below. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.